Hi. <laughs> I'm Edwina Neely from Silver Spring, Maryland in the United States. And I'm so happy to be here. I'm celebrating 45 years of marriage. Give me a <laughs> to my husband over here. <laughs> so I say I'm an educator and author, but most of all, a wife and mother. And I'm so excited. <laughs> and I want to share with you some special things that are, that's on my heart today. I love being a mother. After I had my first child, Bill, the experience was so easy and wonderful. I said to myself, oh my, I must be the best mother in the world. <laughs> I thought, mm, this parenting thing is a piece of cake. I could do it 10 more times. And then I had my second child. <laughs> well, you see, the first child, Bill, was peaceful, easygoing, kind, understanding. And then, when Nicole was born, she came out screaming. She was very, very demanding, strong-willed. Her first word was no, and her favorite word was no. And then I had my third child, Lakeisha. Lakeisha was quiet, serious, intense. She slept through the night, the first night home. And then my fourth child, Prisca, she was just a ball of fun, energetic and cheerful and happy all the time. Now I had always wondered how my children could be so different coming from the same parents. Then one day, I attended this temperament seminar by Florence Litauer, and it opened my eyes to new things. It was revolutionary. It was just amazing for me. This was some 30-something years ago, and I was just going through life thinking about my family and how different my children are, how different my husband is. We're basically opposites, and I was trying to understand all of these differences. So I went to, when I went to this seminar, I found out who I was, who my children were, who my husband was. I learned about the personality types, the four temperaments. And in this learning, I felt a freedom come over me that I could say, I can allow my children and my husband to be themselves. I didn't have to go about trying to decide how to change them. What could I do to make them different? I learned that this was a wonderful thing, their difference. And I was there to experience it. In that seminar, I learned so much. You see, my husband and I were so different. I was always wondering, why is he doing that? What does he do? What, what? I mean, it was just unbelievable because we were the opposite in personalities. And I do believe today that I'm still married because I attended that seminar <laughs> that day. <laughs> You see, in that seminar, I found out about the four temperaments. Many of you know them, but let's just review them and think about them a few minutes. There's the choleric and the sanguine, the phlegmatic and the melancholy. So I learned the choleric and the sanguine are extroverts, really outgoing, and they are the, the introverts or the melancholy and the phlegmatics. Then I learned, I said, okay, there are two, usually, personality types that we have and there's one that's usually dominant. So today, I'm gonna concentrate on the dominant one. Having a family, Florence Sardar says, is something like having, putting on a production. <laughs> and the children of the cast. Now, the only thing is, we don't have a casting director to put them in their perfect roles. So the next thing, the best thing for us to do is to understand the cast that we have our children. Now, I couldn't predetermine their personality, so what I had to do was to study them, to observe them, to discover their personalities. Who are you? What are you here for? And I thought about 
I could understand and describe their behaviors pretty well, as you noticed in the beginning. I could tell you about how they were acting, their behavior. But I didn't understand what this behavior was telling me personality-wise. And that's why my eyes were open. I was able to see and understand the differences. Now, the, we'll go through, I'm gonna go through each child and talk about each one and how this helped me understand my children. My son, Bill. He's an introvert, a phlegmatic. And in the cast, his role is the audience. The personality goal for my son is to have peace. All right, so if there is an argument going on, he would probably sit back and watch and then encourage them to settle it peacefully. His direction is the easy way. Work this thing out. And what he needed was respect and self-worth. And he's called the peaceful personality. My first daughter, Nicole, is a choleric and extrovert. And in the cast, our family cast, her role is the director. Her goal is to have control and the direction of this choleric child is my way. So her needs were to achieve and be appreciated. Her personality is called the powerful personality. The second daughter, Lakeisha, is an introvert, the melancholy. And in the cast, her role is the producer. Her goal is to have perfection and her direction is the right way. So she needs order and sensitivity in her life. So this child is like the background as producer, getting things done, and that's making sure they're, quote, perfect. <laughs> and then the third daughter, Prisca, is the extrovert, the sanguine. In the cast, her role is the star. Her goal is to have fun. Her direction is the happy way and her personality needs are attention and approval. You can see that makes sense. If you're always joking around, having fun, what do you want people to watch you, attend to you, and approve of you? So as I began to integrate these roles, goals, needs, and direction of my children, I could see how their behaviors were depicting these personality types. And I said, oh wow, this is so great. I understand now why they're so different. They're wired that way. They were born that way. And that's okay. As I understood the different personalities, I realized that this didn't happen by chance. I am so blessed to be able to live in a family with four different personality traits. And I know now how to react to others that have that same trait. And that was such a blessing to me. I also understood that no temperament is bad. Everyone is good. Some may be easier to live with. But we all need each other. So, I am a melancholy. The one that wants to be perfect. Wants to be, you notice I said that. <laughs> because I believe no one's perfect. I know that. But I want things to be perfect. So I said, I have to be an organized parent. I'm, I must be this organized mother. So this organization included designing a learning environment for each one of my children. That sounded like a big job. I had four children. So I thought about it. My phlegmatic son, he wanted a peaceful way. He wanted to have peace. And so he needed to be understood and respected and loved. All of them need to know that love, but especially the phlegmatic. The cleric, my first daughter, wanted control her way. So I had to organize my life in such a way that her learning environment would allow her to be in control of something, to make decisions about something. And this is so important for the choleric child. Now, as a parent, I 
knew I had to be organized enough to talk to this child beforehand, to think about things beforehand. Say, for example, if I wanted her to choose an outfit that she was going to wear the next day, I had to organize myself so that I choose the one that I would approve of first, see? Right? And then, so you can say, and then Nicole, you may choose what you'd like to wear tomorrow. And then so you won't have a fight. You, you've already approved them yourself. And that's, that's so very important when working with choleric children because they will be very strong will and want what? Their way. But if we provide and think ahead of time of what we can do when you're going shopping, before you go shopping, talk about what you're going to buy, put that list down, and when you go to the store, you say, you know, this is our list, this is what we're getting. So you don't have to have that power struggle there. It's already taken care of. I'll never forget this young man had brought in his two-year-old choleric daughter one morning. It was freezing outside, and she had a swimsuit on. <laughs> he told me, he said, I'm a silly, I, I, I just couldn't get her to put anything else on. <laughs> Two years old. <laughs> All right, I said, I couldn't believe it. But this child was so strong-willed, and this six-foot dad <laughs> couldn't figure out what to do to get her to put some clothes on. But um, so I, I find that I want to share this with parents so much so that I've started my own business. And in this business, one of the seminars that I do is on understanding temperaments. <laughs> understanding the differences are okay in your child. I wanted peace in my home. So I wanted, I had to design special learning experiences to meet the needs of each one of my children. I knew I had to work at it. I understand now that being different is neither right nor wrong. It's just different. We all had to learn to understand our differences and accept each person as they are and not try to change them. As a parent, you know, sometimes we want to change our children to be what we want them to be and not let them be themselves because they're here for a purpose, and they're made that way for a purpose. And so as we accept them, we can know and have that peace in knowing that they can be happy because they are being themselves. So parents, let's remember not to compare our children. It is the most devastating to say, well, Johnny, why can't you be like your sister and sit here and well, be, be like this one? Oh, never do that. That hurts. They can't be like that because they're themselves. They're someone else. So we want to let them know that your difference is appreciated and we all need each other. So in my seminars, I want to make clear to every parent that God has given you these beautiful creatures to love, to cherish, to accept, and he's made them different so that we all can live together, work together. And I always remember that as I understand my children and my husband, I feel this freedom. And I want others to experience the joy of knowing why we act the way we do. When I see my family react in a certain way, I don't have to wonder. I know they're just being themselves. <laughs> I remember people are different, but being different is neither right nor wrong. Thank you. So when we all learn to accept our differences, we can see that we complement each other. And working together, we can make this world a better place.